So you can see uh, before I started the new topic, so we're done with the structure analysis. And uh, over the weekend, I uh, worked so hard and I created for you uh, your first assignment. So at least you have something just to apply what we uh, kind of uh, learned together. And so the assignment is here. Assignment is a group assignment. And so and I that's on bare boss. I want you guys to talk to each other. I don't want you guys to feel isolation. More important for me is you guys work together. Uh, so a group assignment of two, but please, I don't want to see any like two submissions. So only one member of the team will submit the assignment and on the on the cover page, uh, please write the two names of the students and I will award you the mark. OK, uh, so that's for the submission. The assignment is not uh, very difficult. It's a little bit different that, than what you saw in my lecture because that's unbearable. So I want you guys to think beyond what I gave to you. So very simple, like a, 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 a beam that has two overhangs. And uh, I think the only challenge uh, in this problem here is the shape of the load. So in my class, I gave you a point load and uniform load. Uh, in this problem here, uh, there is a triangular load. OK, uh, and so the value at the support is equal to zero, maximum uh, five at point C in the middle. And so and also on the right cantilever, there is a triangular load. You guys just have to remember what is triangular load is the tri triangle and this year you will see kind of a, a, a real application of triangular load. Uh, you will see that uh, probably in two classes. When we deal with the snow drift, uh, however, uh, really at this point of time, uh, when you want to solve this problem, you just have to replace uh, your triangular load by a point load, which is not very difficult. You guys know the area of a triangle is how much? Simply half of the base times the height. Half the base times the height. OK, so that's the area of the triangle, uh, which simply will save you here and solve you. Because, for example, I can replace the entire this triangle by a point load here at the center of the gravity of your uh, triangle. And the value is half. Uh, the base is eight. Multiply by five, you do the same thing on this side. It will act on point E. You do sigma forces in the Y and the X and moment equal to zero. You will be able to find the reactions. Remember, here I'm asking only for reactions, not bending moment. Uh, question number two and number three, we're asking for uh, shear force and bending moment uh, for a cantilever beam and for a simple beam with overhanging cantilever. So very simple, very straightforward. Really, uh, for the last one, which is uh, very similar to what we have done in class. Uh, however, the shape of the frame is a little bit different, so please don't get scared from the shape of the of the frame. Not really scary. Just think, you know, first principle. How can I uh, model this into my SAFI? Think about grid line. I think the most difficult one is grid line. When you know how many grid lines and what should be the spacing between grid lines and X and Y. Once you establish the grid lines in X and Y in the right way, I think everything become like very straightforward. OK, Again, Wait, a little bit of thinking. Excuse me. Um, so we're all, we do the fourth one on on Safi. I think that's what it says. I think I says here it says here. Because uh, actually, actually, actually right I'm sorry if I didn't say that, but it, did I say it anywhere? No, well, you just said that now. You said you were saying, but, that. but the thing, the thing is, uh, is it uh, is it Dominic? Yeah, yeah. Dominic. The thing is, you cannot solve this even by hand. You cannot. No, I and, couldn't. I know that's why I'm asking because uh, I look at this. I, I'm getting a heart attack a little bit. You're gonna kill somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I didn't mean to give you a heart attack. I'm, I'm sorry. Inside. I'm sorry. I will have to, you know, is everyone attending now? Do we have how many? Like, uh, okay, God, sorry, sorry, sorry. Like, uh, yes, yes, you, uh, you're right. It's uh, uh, the reason why you cannot just do that manually because it's statically indeterminate. And I think it's a good time to, to remind you on the right side here, we have uh, three uh, uh, support 
And on the left side, we have two. So we have two, five unknowns, five unknowns. And so how many equations? We have three because we have only one piece without any intermediate hinge. So it means we have deficiency of two. It means this is two degree uh, indeterminate. And I think I already answered for you, I think the last part, okay? And because it's indeterminate, I think I don't think you can do that with your uh, with your uh, hand calculations. So guys, everyone in this class, I'm sorry, I apologize. This one is a SAFI problem. You have to do it using SAFI, okay? Uh, just for again, as I said, the challenge is the the grid lines. Once you are are able to establish the grid line based on this dimension right away uh, in X and Y. I think you just have to place the joints and then connect with members and then follow my tutorial. And uh, just I think it should be straightforward. OK, uh, just please make sure you uh, you when I ask you for a bending moment diagram, uh, probably you have to create the bending moment diagram on Safi and take a, a snapshot. Uh, make sure that all the numbers are legible. You can read them. And also you do a separate diagram for uh, the shear force diagram. And uh, you just base those sna uh, like snapshots into uh, Winward when you f where you finish all your uh, finish all your uh, your uh, assignment. Guys, any question regarding the assignment? Show your hands if you have any question regarding the assignment. If you had a chance to look at the assignment over the weekend, okay, we have two. Great. Who? Let's see. We have uh, Diego. And so in the Safi problem in question number four, uh, point E is a pin or is a roller? Uh, point E? Yeah. You can see the point E, there is moment and horizontal and vertical. It means this is fixed. Fixed, okay. Okay. Look, how about point A? Point A is a hinge because you have uh, VA and HA. So those are the reaction. It means two. There is no rotation. I'm, I mean, there is no moment. It means this is uh, 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 a hinge. Next is uh, we have a jelly. Um, can we do our um, grouping now? So we know who doesn't have the group yet or who doesn't have partner yet? Because it's hard uh, to fish somebody else to like uh, see who has no group yet or doesn't have the group yet or has a group. You know what? Listen, what I can do is what I can do. To be honest, what I can do is I can set up a channel for everyone. And this channel is not like for lecture. It's for your internal discussion. I don't want to be honest. I don't want to put myself into coordinating this. I'm going to put it uh, a channel. I'm not sure if this is going to help you, but if I have a channel, it means I'm going to turn off the notification. I'm going to look at it at all. And then it's your your uh, channel to communicate anything regarding the course, but don't say anything, uh, any bad word about me, okay? Because I'm gonna know at least. I'm gonna at some point I will know. <laughs> so what do you think about this idea? Does it does it help? If I create a channel and add everyone to the channel, but yeah. not for my, not including me, I'm not gonna be included. I'm gonna turn yeah. off the notification. So don't assume I'm gonna look at it. I'm going to ignore. I'm going to turn off notification. It is for you to coordinate things like uh, assignment groups and stuff like that. Yeah, at least we know who has no group yet and, and who has already group. OK, so I will do that. So I will straight after the class. I will create this channel for internal discussions. OK, anyone else who has any concern. About the assignment. Uh, OK, again, if you have any qu question, uh, contact me, but please don't be late. Like don't call me or text me midnight and don't please don't text me. As much as you can on the weekend, I kind of had a, a little mistake, which I was working so hard on Saturday and Sunday, both of them, and then I published my assignment and then there are very, very keen students, very keen. I like them so much, but the thing is uh, they just ask questions on the weekend, so to be honest, I, I didn't know what to do, but I had to answer them. But uh, I didn't want to turn in my weekends into kind of a full time day. I work on the weekend each like five hours. I don't want to work like 10 hours on the weekend. That's too much for me. So yeah, please, uh, if you have any questions, just you know, text me maybe before 6 p.m. and I will answer. OK. Uh, now, guys, we have uh, we still have uh, 15 minutes in our class. And I have material for you to cover. So we cover already the assignment. So I have here a uh, kind of a presentation. 
it's available already on available already on uh, on the um, D2L on the D2L. However, I think uh, so. I provide you the, with the PDF uh, format because it's kind of uh, lighter to handle and uh, lighter to download. But maybe myself, I can use my uh, my PowerPoint. So just be patient, please, and we will be on our way soon. Uh, Yep. Guys, so far, maybe so far, maybe you think, you know what? Like, you know, we had nothing so far uh, related to concrete. So you can see everything is statics and discussion about design, nothing specific to concrete. Uh, I know that this is sometimes is very boring and uh, you think that this will be our course. Where is our design? But those are kind of a very important steps that we cannot really proceed to the design itself without understanding. Uh, the structure. What's the point of go me going to teach you how to design a beam while you don't know how to find the bending moment for the beam? So hopefully you understand the importance. One of the steps uh, is uh, simply uh, analysis. And if you guys remember, we covered this before. So this was part of our uh, uh, probably first class. We said in any design process, any, whether you design concrete, steel, wood, and probably there's some overlap with Corwin, uh, you will see no choice. You have to go through those steps, which is structural system, the layout, uh, building materials. So we know that because we're using concrete. Uh, we have to find the loads and we have to do after we find the loads, we have to do a structure analysis and then uh, design comes next. OK, where we say, OK, my beam has to be 300 by 600. It has to have uh, three bars of 25 M. So this will happen next. So, so far, what you learn with me in my class is only one item called structure analysis. However, in this exercise, you didn't know really where to estimate those loads. Like, for example, in the one that I solved with you guys using SAFI, on the roof, there is a 15 kilo newton per meter dead load. There is a 10 kilo newton per meter live load, and there is a wind left of 10 and wind right of 15. So where Tahir got all those numbers, that is something you will learn in my class for today, for uh, today, uh, Wednesday, and then Thursday, and also I think uh, Monday of next week. So it is going to take from me, I think, three classes, three classes, including this introduction for probably 10 minutes. So our discussion for the next uh, three classes or four, will focus on loads. How do you find loads acting on the structure? OK, so uh, again, and you can see this is uh, an essential step of the design without finding the loads, without finding the moment from these loads, then there is nothing called uh, uh, find how many bars or how, what is the type of the concrete. There is nothing like that. OK, next is now. When it comes to loads, there are so many loads that they can affect your structure while the structure is alive. Uh, we classify them because this classification will help us in the future. So the classification is you can see I just copied this one from the National Building Code or Alberta Building Code because simply they are copy and paste. Uh, so this slide here tells you the possible load that may affect your structure. 100% dead load because there is no structure without dead load. There is none because every structure it has a dead load, which is including the weight of the building component. And we will talk in details shortly about dead load. Next is uh, the live load. Live load is uh, another kind of load that affect your structure uh, due to the occupancy. Uh, so. We see on every structure like a school or, or, uh, or state or church or house, there is occupancy load coming from the occupant of this structure. So this is what called live load. Next one is snow. So snow load is uh, we are in Canada. We get uh, here some snow. Maybe snow is not happening somewhere on the earth. For example, in Egypt, I, I don't believe at any point of time. Yes, we had some snow, very little on the ground last winter, but in general, I myself was born and raised in Egypt and I have never seen snow my life in Egypt. OK, um, 
So uh, anyway, so those are the kind like you can see I made a box. I box them because this is the only three types of loads that you will learn in my class. You will learn about dead load, live load, snow load, and also in the snow, uh, you know, in, in winter we get snow, in summer we get rain, so we'll teach you snow and rain. So the snow and rain, they are under, under the same, same topic. So as I said again, in my class, you will learn about only dead and live and snow and rain. However, in engineering or in general, any structure may see beyond those uh, three loads. Uh, you can see here, and I guess you guys know that, huh? Uh, there is something called the wind load. Uh, wind moves and sometimes it's very harmful. Look at the states right now where you have a like a hurricane and the load can uh, and the damage will be devastating. So loads is a very, very dangerous load in some areas. Even not the states, even south of Alberta, uh, close to the border, I think Waterton has a very, very high wind load. That's why you will see in this area we have like wind farm, like wind farm that we can simply uh, harvest electricity from wind. Uh, so wind is another load, but uh, we are. I'm not going to teach you wind in my class. So uh, you will get wind in core winds. And uh, as I said before, uh, you, we used to teach all those loads, all of them, uh, and we repeat them again in, in concrete and steel. Uh, a few years ago, we decided not to do that to save some time and cover more material. Uh, so you will see wind will be studied in steel with core wind. Snow will be with Tahir in concrete. However, both of us, because it doesn't take long time, we will cover dead load and live load. Uh, the list is not over yet. So we talked about dead, live, snow and wind. Those are kind of most common ones. However, uh, probably every structure will also see an uh, like uh, the uh, earth pressure. Uh, so, uh, for example, if you uh, your basement in your house, if it's not really work out basement, uh, uh, if your basement is submerged under the soil, all the house retaining walls, they have to simply withstand the soil pressure at the back. OK, so earth pressure is another load. If you're designing even. Um, uh, even uh, like, for example, um, a swimming pool, if you're designing a swimming pool, you, you can imagine when we uh, fill the swimming pool with water, the water as any other fluid will just put some pressure on the walls. Uh, so this is uh, like a like a like liquid pressure. Uh, again, the list is so long and I don't have time to go through uh, on every individual load. But uh, what I want you to imagine that the list can go and go uh, even for sometimes uh, like the nature sometimes causes, uh, you know, uh, load uh, loads like uh, like temperature, the temperature variation between the winter and summer between the night and day. Uh, can cause uh, internal forces in your structure uh, if you restrain the, the 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 structure. If the structure is free to move, so simply you're okay. You should be okay. Uh, now let's move on to uh, you know dead load. So I can probably cover this one only today. And uh, next class we can simply uh, continue the discussion. Uh, so guys, uh, when we think about dead load, what do we mean? So the, the the code is very, very specific, very, very specific when it comes to dead load, because sometimes you will see, should I consider uh, the, the chair is a dead load? Should I consider, although it said it's dead, huh? so the chair is dead, it's not alive. Should I consider the dead as dead load or live load? OK, if I have a tree or I have a planter, should I consider my tree or planter as live load or dead load. So again, as I said, the code is very specific. So I'm going to let you guys read in couple in a minute. Read 4.1.4 and please uh, take a note. Take a note, please, that I need every one of you to download the Alberta Building Code 2019 from State Library. OK, if you don't know how, please. Check my D2L. You will see two videos, one about the Alberta building code and the, the, the manual from my D2L. Before next class, please download them. The thing is, you every time you run them, like you try to open them using uh, Adobe, you need to have your VBN client running. Otherwise, 
I think what happened is the G, the um, the BDF will be screwed and it will see it will look like empty. OK, so guys, again, watch me, please. I'm going to stop in here. You know what? We have no time. I know it's 2.45. I don't want to rush this one, but here is what you need to do. You need to download the Alberta Building Code 2019 from State Library. Watch the videos. But please, before you double click on it and open it using Adobe, please make sure you have your BV VBN uh, running. Otherwise, if you start opening your PDF file without this running, what happened is uh, your PDF will be screwed and you have to download it one more time. So every time you open or you try to run or open your file, make sure you have a VBN client running on the background. OK, so please, everyone have the following. So I want you so this you can see this is the Alberta building code. I'm going to go to the top. You can see here. So this Alberta building uh, code of 2019. I want everyone to have this PDF downloaded on your uh, computer. I will do my best to include in my slides like snapshots from the Alberta building code, uh, but I need you because I want you guys also to read with me. So have it downloaded, OK? And we'll continue discussion next class. I will see you guys on Wednesday. For now, do you have any questions so far? OK, if you have any question, enjoy your day. I will see you guys Wednesday morning. Bye for now.